What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ and today I want to talk about something that I see a lot of confusion over and that is how to choose accessory exercises and more specifically how to choose accessory exercises for powerlifting and in this we're dealing with a dichotomy of overlap versus contrast. So you'll notice in a lot of my videos that I'm doing a lot of machine movements and even isolation work after my main exercises. So you'll see on my last video, for example, I squat heavy, deadlift heavy, and then I do single leg press and then hamstring curls. And that may seem odd since I am training specifically for powerlifting, but the reason why I choose those accessory exercises which don't necessarily overlap too much with the main lifts is so that I don't negatively impact my recovery. See, that's why I break it down into this dichotomy. In my opinion, you have exercises that are accessory that are overlap accessories and then you have contrast accessories and in the contrast you're doing something that you're not necessarily training in the main lifts so for example you're doing maybe unilateral work working one leg at a time or you're doing isolation work or you're doing for example on deadlift days let's say you're doing hip thrusts to train your glutes without training your lower back too much as well whereas on the other hand we have the overlap accessories and those are really to essentially translate into sports specific training they're to simulate closely the main lifts and these are fine but generally I usually don't use them unless if I'm actually replacing the main movement with that exercise the problem with including those overlapping exercises too often is that it can hurt your recovery and you get to a point where you say why even include those if we're looking for sports specific training for example let's take the deadlift if we want to improve that as quickly as possible, you could say, okay, the stiff-legged deadlift is going to be a superior accessory exercise to something like the hamstring curl. In and of itself, this is clearly the case. However, if you're already deadlifting heavy right before it, then you could say, why even include stiff-legged deadlifts? Why not just do more sets of those standard deadlifts? And this is a point Jason Blaha of Juggernaut Fitness TV brought up. I'll include a link in the description to his channel, by the way, if you haven't subscribed already. He has a great channel, but he brought me up saying that, you know, why am I doing leg curls as a raw power lifter? That that's basically going to have no carryover directly into the main lifts. And I agree with him, and this is my point. The point was that it doesn't impact recovery as much and that it doesn't become a replacement exercise. Because in and of itself, stiff-legged -like deadlifts are far superior for a powerlifter. There's no argument there. And I actually do involve them quite often. I love stiff-legged -like deadlifts, and how I use them is, as I said, as a replacement exercise. So I use them on days I'm not actually deadlifting heavy. So let's say I'm squatting twice a week and then on the second day I want to just do stiff-legged deadlifts instead. I also have the same philosophy when it comes to incorporating pause movements. As you see in my strength control program, I specifically have pause deadlifts and pause squats on a separate day. And the reason for this is that so you can give your full attention to that movement and be as fresh as possible, be as focused as possible to progressively overload in that variation. I think the most important point to make here is that when it comes to training for strength in general and more specifically for powerlifting, you're going to build the most amount of strength and muscle through the main lifts. So you shouldn't worry about variations too much to the point where it detracts from that main work. However, I want to say that there is a big exception to this rule. And that is that if your form is breaking down. Because if this is happening, then you're strengthening bad movement patterns. You're essentially becoming stronger in positions that you don't want to be in. So that's why in that scenario, that's where I recommend corrective exercises that do have a lot of overlap with the main lifts. And this is what I recommend in my form check service a lot. Where I recommend for some people have problem keeping their knees out. I'll say to do very wide stance squats after the regular squatting. And another example would be to incorporate front squats if in your back squat you're always turning it into a good morning. If you don't incorporate some overlapping corrective exercises, then you just simply will not fix that issue. In my opinion, if you are a raw power lifter, there are only four movements that are necessary for long-term success. And that is the bench press, the squat, the deadlift, and then one upper back movement. Anything else is just added on, and you should understand that it can help you but you should also understand its role, that no other accessory exercise is going to make or break your training. It's not going to be the key to your success. The key to your success is always going to be those basics. So that's it, guys. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Now, I don't know much about where I'm from, but I know I strike fear everywhere I come. Government want me dead, so I wear my gun. I really want the rocket launcher, but I'm still too young.